Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Tonight we have something a little bit different. We have a 2002 BMW 325i in the garage. This is one of my son's friend's cars. I got to go help him select it. It was a used car for sale and I got chosen by his mother to be a, a third set of eyes. Anyway, he bought the car obviously and so far it seems pretty decent. It is actually have a manual transmission in it which is pretty rare these days or at least a kid that can drive it and why there's a snowboard on the roof I'm sorry I cannot answer that question in the middle of July third week of July so anyway it's in here tonight because it was diagnosed with an oil leak which is apparently the oil filter housing which I guess is a pretty common problem on these cars and the shop that diagnosed it wanted to charge them $700 to fix it so I agreed to fix it for $699 or less so here it is it doesn't have a screwed up stance my wife helped me get it on the lift and the blocks because my lifts a little bit tall and lower cars like to drag and apparently she misunderstood the instructions so one of the wheels didn't quite make it so we need to get that straightened out and I don't believe I need to lift it to do this operation but I need to lift it to get it squared up again and get the block back under it so this is the oil filter if we can see that oil filter housing and that bolts to the side of the block and they attach apparently the alternator and the power steering reservoir to it so we need to get all this stuff out of the way to get that off there and replace the gasket this is the gasket I was provided not much to it a rubber gasket apparently it's sandwiches in there between the block and the oil filter housing now we need to remove this air intake tube and someone has installed a performance aftermarket hot air intake which is kind of funny they did at least block off the engine compartment with it but there's like big holes so it can suck in hot air from behind it um, and down below here and yet it still utilizes the factory air inlet so maybe it's a warm air intake I mean these are open so and I would <laughs> I would doubt the surface area that filters any larger than what was originally equipped on here so these have rivets on them that should pull out and this should come off and then it looks like some allen screws etc in there so I'm gonna work on getting that off so this has plastic rivets which the center pulls out and then the rivet should come out GM should take note of that this car is 20 years old almost and they came right out so we will set that aside and we'll work on the hot air box over here So there's that. Probably don't need to, but I'm going to go ahead and get the mass airflow meter out of the way. This is the power steering fluid reservoir. It's obviously on top, so I'm going to get it out of the way. Next up is the alternator. It looks suspiciously like it's been replaced. So, I suppose I should go ahead and find the, uh, find the battery and disconnect that. And we need to take, figure out where the tensioner is for the serpentine belt, and we'll need to loosen that too. So the battery's in the trunk, by the way. 
fan shroud needs to come off to access the belt tensioner for the alternator which is apparently down there somewhere. I see one screw and looks like a T25. Long one at that. And then it looks like this alternator, this fan shroud, actually the whole fan assembly should pull up out of the way. Well, VW should take lessons from that because that's like really easy. I don't really have to disconnect it. And the tensioner is hidden down here somewhere. Great. So on this particular car, to get this belt off, it takes an eight millimeter Allen in the front of the tensioner and there's like a shock absorber tensioner down below that. So you put a ratchet in there with an eight millimeter and you put it in the tighten mode and you turn it till you feel like you're about to break something and you'll collapse that tensioner just enough that you can slip the belt off. Fortunately, that's all we need to do. So we've gotten that far and it's like 90 degrees out here. Sweat's rolling my eyes, so we'll resume tomorrow night. So this idler bolt is a 16 millimeter. I've already broken it loose. And it looks like it goes through and holds the alternator onto the bracket. It has this eccentric, it has a little, this is kind of like a dowel right there and there's a notch in the alternator that locates that. Let's Uh, that thing could stand to be replaced at some point soon. Let's see what else there is to get this alternator off here. Assuming there's got to be a bolt down below somewhere, and I see another 16 down there that's going to require a socket. Need a little more leverage on that one. And that is another long one. Good oil soak too. There's an electrical connection right here in the alternator. I'll go ahead and pop that loose just because it's easy to get off. There's also the main battery connection and a cooling hose in the back. Let me see what it takes to get those off. So that alternator's off there. It's 13 millimeter nut and a hose that just slides on. Now, Apparently this car was serviced all of its life at some local BMW specialty shop. And I would have thought when they put that alternator on there going this far, they should they would have known and they would have replaced that gasket because apparently it's a known issue. So I'm going to break that oil filter cap loose. And that should break the vacuum in there. And that should, if we're lucky allow all that oil to drain to the pan. Because I was not provided with oil filter and oil and I think they just changed this oil like really really recently. So I'm not changing it. So we'll put that back on there loosely. I'm giving up on gloves at this point. There's an electrical connection right there. Two pins. There's one on the back. Another. Heck, there's only one pin in that one, so that'd be easy not to screw up. And then down here on the 
power steering pump looks as though that bolt needs to come out and that bolt there needs to come out and that will allow the power steering pump to stay there and there's six bolts holding this whole housing on and it looks like this tensioner is going to come with it I'm not sure how much of that we're going to see but that's a 13 they all look like 13 long and short, the long ones to the outside of the car. Alright, looks like that thing's pretty much drained all the way. Now that it's loose, let me see if it will, now that all the bolts are out, I believe, let's see if it'll come loose. And it does, so now we can take the rest of them out. These bolts are varying length, so for right now I'm just going to leave them in their respective holes. All right, looks like the power steering pump's gonna come with it. Great. Alright, so it definitely is going to come with it. Let me figure that out. So it looks as though there's another power steering bolt, a 13, under here facing up, bolting up into this bracket. And also I missed on the back below one of these oil pressure senders is a banjo bolt, which has an oil line fitting that runs up, and that's a 19. And that one should be a 13 down there, and there's no way you're going to see that. And get those out. And this whole setup comes out of here. Let's not lose any bolts. So there we go. Let's get that cleaned up. So I've cleaned the big chunks off our whole housing setup here in the parts washing machine. I got the gasket out and if you lay it up there it pretty much looks right so I think it is let's go ahead and get this one out of here god damn it I knew that was gonna happen Pretty crispy. So the new one should drop right in all those grooves. Where was I? I think something like that ought to work.
that one is actually springy enough that it protrudes above the surface whereas this one had crushed enough that it was it has no longer no longer rubber it's kind of kind of like cement all that surface is good and clean clean enough anyway and I mopped up what oil I could Are dowel pins down in there that will locate this in the correct position. It appears to be right. So these LED lights have some pretty redeeming qualities, like they last a long time and batteries last a long time, but seeing with them is not one of them. Just like that, it appears to be in position. All right, we'll find all our bolts and get them started. They are right here. So the information I was able to find calls for 22 newton meters or roughly 16 foot pounds for the torque on this. It's probably something critical. You should probably torque these just to make sure that gasket gets squished evenly all around. Let's see how tight, it didn't, it's probably not very tight. Test a couple. All right, that should be good. I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest back together in the sort of reverse process of removal. So we'll get that back together and bring it back. So it's the next day. I just got the serpentine belt back on. That's the routing for it. So everything's hooked back up other than the air intake. I'm gonna start the car and see if I can see that area, see if there's any leaks. Don't have a whole lot of uh, access to that with everything on, but here goes. There's no muffler, but I don't see any leaks. All that racket appears to be the air pump, which injects air into the exhaust on startup for emissions. Looks like that thing's on its way out too. Should shut off here in a second. I'm going to tell him to start saving his money for that one. All right. Get this put back on there and get it out of here, and we'll be done with this project. Thanks for watching.